Hi everyone, welcome to the channel ko. Ako nga pala si Janus ng Pinoy Tech Dad. At today, medyo break time muna tayo sa cellphone reviews. Dahil ang pag-uusapan natin is yung nakikita nyo sa likod ko. And that is the Asus ZenBook OLED 14 2022 version. And that is also an i5 variant. And alamin natin kung gaano nga ba kaganda yung display ng OLED on a laptop. As well as kung okay nga ba siyang gamitin if you are planning to buy this. So, yan po ang mga aalamin natin right after this quick unboxing. Alright guys, so that was our quick unboxing of the Asus ZenBook OLED 14 2022. Pero bago ang lahat, magpapasalamat po muna ako sa sponsor ng video natin dahil ang video na to ay handog ng Ugreen HiTune Max 3. Ang Ugreen HiTune Max 3 ay isang hybrid active noise cancelling headphones na napakaganda ng presyo. So this will only cost around 5,000 pesos lalo na pag nabili nyo to sa 11-11 sale. So kung gusto nyo makabili ng active noise cancelling headphones and ayaw nyo gumasos na malaki, eto na po ang napaka high quality, maganda yung audio and meron din itong wear detect as well as 3D spatial audio. At yung build mismo ng HiTune Max 3 ay very premium for the price that you pay for. Kung gusto nyo i-check out to, lahat po ng links nandyan po sa description box. And kung gusto nyo makakita ng full review nito, abangan nyo lang po dun sa other channel ko na Top Down Tech. Alright, so balik na tayo sa topic natin ng Asus ZenBook OLED 14. So, ano nga ba ang key selling point nitong laptop na to para i-consider nyo? So, first off, yung nasa akin is the i5 variant pero meron din tong i7 na version. And yung processor niya is 12th gen na po so updated na po siya to 2022 specs. And actually, wala po akong gagawin benchmark dito dahil gusto ko lang talaga ipakita sa inyo yung user experience ko. Dahil yung mga benchmarks, gagawin natin yan doon sa top-down tech. Pero for this specific video guys, ibabahagi ko lang po talaga yung mga nagustuhan ko at yung mga hindi ko naman gaanong nagustuhan sa Asus ZenBook OLED 14. So simulan natin sa slim design ng laptop na to. Na kung di nyo alam guys, yung ZenBook line ng Asus is usually the more premium line if you compare it with a Vivo Book. Pero siguro the best feature ng mga ZenBook is that they're super slim. And this one is no different. So this really has an ultrabook form factor, super nipis, and hindi talaga siya mabigat. 1.39 kilograms lang po. Napagaan. Pwedeng-pwede mong buhatin with your one hand. And I like the fact na pwedeng-pwede mo lang ipasok dito sa super slim na sleeve. And you can be on your way with your laptop. So isa talaga yan sa mga maaasahan nyo pag sinabing ZenBook line. It's gonna be very slim. Very lightweight and of course, premium yung build quality niya. Pangalawa yung ports. So usually pag sinabi kasi yung Ultrabook, you only have USB-C ports and then wala na gaanong ibang ports. Dahil nga tinitipid sa space para maging slim. But this one has enough ports. So meron pa rin HDMI 2.0. Merong USB-C Thunderbolt ports and then meron ding USB-A na port. So talagang nasiksik nila lahat dito at idadagdag ko pa meron pang micro SD card slot. So Asus really did their best para maisiksik talaga lahat ng ports na pwede sa ganitong form factor. Susunod naman, pag-usapan naman natin yung performance na isa sa mga nagustuhan ko din dahil meron na tong 12th gen na i5 na processor. Meron nitong Intel Iris Xe na pwede siyang makapaglaro ng ilang games. But of course, you have to settle for very low graphics dahil nasubukan ko to for gaming like Dota 2 and kinaya naman niya. But of course, I had to set it to the lowest graphical settings dahil medyo mataas din yung screen resolution niya. This one has a 2.8K resolution but of course, we'll talk about that later on in the video. But balik tayo sa performance. Kung gagamitin nyo lang to for your usual task for work, for school, like uh, Microsoft Word, of course, sobrang basic nun. 
and for browsing the internet or for maybe editing videos. Now, for editing videos, guys, you have to take note first na kung gusto nyo mag-edit dito, it has to be at full HD or maybe even 720p resolution. Hindi po niya kakayanin pag naging 4K file po yan and napakaraming effects. So, it has to be a very basic edit. Kung baga, cut lang ng mga clips dahil kung nagkaroon na ng mga animations eh medyo mahihirapan to dahil nga wala siyang dedicated na graphics card. So hopefully very clear sa inyo yan guys na hindi po ito powerhouse when it comes to editing videos pero kung Photoshop ang gagamitin nyo and maybe editing some music eh kakaya din naman niya. Alright, so let's move on at last Sa main highlight talaga nitong ZenBook OLED 14, of course, it's the display. Sobrang dami kong gustong sabihin tungkol sa display ng Asus ZenBook OLED. But siguro, kung meron mang one word to sum it all, it's beautiful. Napakaganda po talaga ng OLED display. And that is something that I've come to know after using OLED TVs for several years. I think since 2018, I switched to OLED na. And talagang alam ko ang kakayahan ng OLED display and kung nakita nyo, nag-switch siya to a screensaver and that's an OLED care thing na in-implement ng Asus dito sa OLED display nila for the Asus ZenBook OLED dahil nga para ma-prevent yung burn-in but let's talk about burn-in later on for now, let's really dive in kung bakit napakaganda po ng OLED display on a laptop lalo na on this one first off, kailangan nyo malaman na yung screen resolution nito is 2.8K. So, hindi po tulad ng typical Full HD resolution yung display ng ZenBook OLED 14. Which means na sobrang daming pixels ang kinompress nila inside of the screen giving you a denser, richer, and sharper image compared to a regular Full HD na display. And isa talaga ito sa mapapansin mo agad once you turn on the ZenBook OLED 14. Pero bukod pa sa mga specs na binanggit ko, yung typical na laptops natin at this price point, usually, nasa 60 hertz refresh rate lang. But dito sa ZenBook OLED 14, you can push the refresh rate up to 90 hertz. So, you will have a smoother experience if you're watching videos or maybe just even browsing the internet. It's gonna be a better experience. Buttery smooth po talaga tingnan. Now, kung hindi ka pa nakakita ng OLED TV or an OLED laptop, well, ito po, isa side-by-side -side natin ang isang IPS LCD na laptop versus the Asus ZenBook OLED 14. Now, of course, this regarding the size, the ZenBook 14 is definitely smaller than the 15-inch laptop that I'm comparing it with. But you can definitely see agad na mas vibrant tingnan yung images on the OLED 14. Mas maganda yung saturation, mas colorful. The colors really pop out. And yung contrast niya, it's infinite because again, this is an OLED display. So talagang black is truly black. And yan po yung mga maaasahan nyo talaga pag bumili ng OLED display, not just on your laptop, but as well as on your TV. So isa talaga sa mga benefit ng OLED display is that pag black talaga yung scene, example, nighttime, eh magta-turn off po talaga yung individual OLED diodes. Unlike pag IPS LCD na laptop na usually edge lighting lang po yung ginagamit, eh makikita natin na pag dark yung scenes, meron po tayong light bleed na nakikita sa edges ng display. Pero if you think it all ends there, wait, there's more. Dahil isa pa sa mga nagustuhan ko is that Pantone validated na po yung display nitong ZenBook OLED 14 which means very color accurate na po siya out of the box. You don't even have to tweak it. So kung gagamitin niyo tong ZenBook OLED 14 for your business, maybe a photo printing business, talagang maaasahan nyo yung display niya to be color accurate. At panghuli sa display guys, meron ding HDR capability itong ZenBook OLED 14 which means may enjoy nyo talaga yung HDR content ng Netflix or maybe even on YouTube dahil meron na mga HDR content sa YouTube. So yung colors ng mga movies or ng TV series na papanoorin nyo, lalong may enhance dito sa laptop na to. Next, pag-usapan naman natin yung battery life. So ginamit ko to on battery power lang and inabot ako ng about 7 hours of using it on and off. So after 7 hours, I had to charge it and aabutin kayo ng about 
3 hours of charging the Zenbook OLED 14. Now, I'm sure marami sa inyo ang mag-aalala or magtatanong kung okay lang bang gamitin na naka-plug all the time yung Asus Zenbook OLED 14. And I can say yes, dahil po ito sa My Asus na program kung saan pwede nyo pong iset kung hanggang saan yung battery percentage na itcha charge habang naka-plug in. Now, kung naka-plug in kayo all the time, maybe you can set the maximum battery charge up to 60% lang. Pero kung gusto nyo na mas balance yung paggamit ng Zenbook OLED 14 kung saan eh minsan hindi kayo nakasaksak sa power, eh pwedeng pwede na po yung balance mode kung saan hanggang 80% yung itcha charge niya sa battery mo. Now, isa pa sa mga nagustuhan ko is yung speakers nito. You'll be surprised at how powerful the speakers are for its size. Eto na, test natin at paparinig ko sa inyo. stops for the dreamers, the creators, the hungry. Next up naman, nagustuhan ko rin na meron na siyang kasamang webcam. Although hindi ganun kaganda, but still, this is a plus for me na meron kasamang webcam ang isang laptop. So here's a quick sample. Yeah, this is what you can expect usually from webcams na integrated sa mga laptops these days. So they're not gonna be of great quality, pero it's more of Pwede na, yung tipong pwede na natin gamitin just in case na we're in a tight spot and wala talaga tayong dedicated webcam na pwede gamitin sa mga meetings natin. So, this is still very useful and I actually like it na may kasamang ganito. And this is the audio naman na meron ding noise cancellation na kasama. What do you guys think? One, two, three, mic test, mic test. Anyway, let's go back to the review. Alright guys, so let's move on naman sa mga bagay na hindi ko gaano nagustuhan dito sa laptop na to. Now, siguro number one dyan is yung expandability. So when I say expandability, kasama na po dyan yung pag-upgrade natin ng RAM as well as ng SSD. So this one has a 512GB of storage and for the most part, sapat naman na yun kung hindi naman talaga to yung main na computer mo. For example, kung gagamitin mo lang talaga siya for mostly document work and maybe some movies here and there na dinadownload mo, perhaps, okay lang yon. But if you really want a bigger storage, I would have wanted na sana meron pa isang slot for another SSD. Pero bukod pa doon, siguro ang biggest issue lang for me is the fact na I can't add more RAM dito sa Asus Zenbook OLED 14. Now, thankfully, meron namang 16GB of RAM na version ito. But of course, that's gonna be more expensive. But then, hindi mo rin pwedeng i-upgrade yon. So I hope yung mga future Zenbooks ay magkaroon ng option na pwede mong dagdagan ng RAM. Dahil I don't think it will occupy too much space naman kung idagdag mo lang yung napakaliit na sodium stick ng RAM on a laptop. And then para sa akin, siguro as a content creator, a little bit more power would have gone a long way para makapag-edit ng videos at 1080p na merong konting effects. And siguro pang huli guys, this is not really a knock on the Asus Zenbook OLED 14 but rather on the OLED technology. So alam naman natin kasi na merong risk of screen burn-in yung OLED displays and not just with Asus but all the other manufacturers ng OLED displays. So I'm not gonna say na wala na pong risk ng burn-in. Burn-in will always be there as a risk. Ang sinasabi naman sa atin ni Asus is that they've improved the technology and meron na silang mga precautions na nilagay. Like you can see yung screensaver sa background, it's playing and it's making sure na always activated yung screen natin and that yung pixels niya ay nagbabago. Dahil ang pinakakalaban ng OLED displays is a static image. So kung meron kayong static image for a very long time na very high contrast, very saturated, very colorful, that means the OLED diode will really work hard to brighten up the image. So dun po nasusunog yung buhay ng OLED. Asus assures na meron tayong 7,000 hours na OLED lifespan at 200 nits. So this is what they're guaranteeing us, guys. And I think that's about 291 days. But take note, guys, 
You're not gonna use your laptop for 291 consecutive days. And if you are, what are you doing? Why are you even choosing an OLED display? Isa pa pala sa mga hindi ko nagustuhan is that yung display niya is very reflective. So you will really have a hard time kung gagamitin niyo to outdoors on a sunny day. I would highly recommend you use it indoors na hindi masyadong maaraw para magamit niyo na maayos and makita niyo na maayos yung display. So yung SRP nito is about 72,995 pesos. Pero kung gusto nyo ng updated pricing talaga dahil usually naman may mga sale na nangyayari or mga promos, I'll put the link in the description box. Alright, so with the price in mind guys, obviously the Asus ZenBook OLED 14 is not for everyone. Actually guys, you'll be surprised dahil considered pa rin itong laptop na to as affordable for what it offers. So again, this one is an ultra compact laptop. Napakagaan, madaling dalhin kahit saan. And bagay na bagay talaga to para sa mga young professionals who are always on the go or maybe even if you're a college student who needs a laptop na pwede mong dalhin anytime sa school pag nagbalik na sa face-to-face. -face. This is definitely something that I would recommend if ganun yung kailangan nyo na setup. Lalo na kung gagamitin nyo rin to as your multimedia player for music and watching videos. Oh my God, this is gonna be so good dahil lang sa display niya. But again, you have to take note of the price. If this doesn't fit your budget, hindi nyo po kailangan pilitin. Pero if this fits your budget and sakto sakto sa needs nyo, guys, yung links po nito nasa description box. Bilhin nyo na po. But anyway, kung gusto nyo po ng more detailed explanation or review nitong laptop na to, check out my channel, Top Down Tech, and doon nyo po mapapanood yung mga technical specs and technical details na pag-uusapan natin tungkol sa Asus ZenBook OLED 14. But anyway, kung gusto nyo pang manood ng mga videos ko, meron po akong mga ililink dyan na I'm sure marami kayong matututunan. So hanggang sa susunod, ako nga pala ulit si Janus ng Pinoy Tech Dad. Kita-kita ulit tayo.